to be on mission. We know that God was on mission when he came to this earth to to seek and save that which is lost. We also know that God is on mission. It says in his word that he is searching the whole earth to see those whose hearts are fully committed to him so he can strengthen them. Right. We know God is on mission. Right. When you're on mission, you will not stop at anything. Right. Jesus didn't stop his mission when, when we see that Satan came and tempted him with other options. We, we see that Jesus didn't stop his mission when religious leaders and even his disciples even tried to create a different path for him. Jesus didn't even stop his mission when death was a part of his mission. Like crucifixion, the most gruesome way to die in all of history, was a part of the mission and it didn't slow Jesus down having a mission it changes a lot it shifts a lot it it, it's a game changing thing right like in and that love compels us it it challenges us I want to talk about that 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 mission from God Right, that that mission. Some of you, you're at an age you just instantly saw, thought of the Blues Brothers, and it's okay. The Lord loves you, right? And if you're too young for that, I don't know. It's on some streaming service somewhere, or it will be, right? But I want to talk about what it means to be on mission. We know that God was on mission when he came to this earth to to seek and save that which is lost. We also know that God is on mission. It says in his word that he is searching the whole earth to see those whose hearts are fully committed to him so he can strengthen them. Right. We know God is on mission. Right. When you're on mission, you will not stop at anything. Right. Jesus didn't stop his mission when, when we see that Satan came and tempted him with other options. We, we see that Jesus didn't stop his mission when religious leaders and even his disciples even tried to create a different path for him. Jesus didn't even stop his mission when death was a part of his mission. Like crucifixion, the most gruesome way to die in all of history, was a part of the mission and it didn't slow Jesus down having a mission it changes a lot it shifts a lot it it, it's a game changing thing and and you can have a mission in in your whole life and you can have mission in little areas of your life like yesterday for example my family we had a mission to accomplish yesterday my wife got a text message from this resale shop that we go to sometimes, and they were doing a sale. As much stuff as you could fit in this like Walmart bag, as much stuff as you could fit in that bag, it was just going to cost you $35. Oh, oh, game on. Game on. I got three teenagers. One of them is about to go to college. I'm about to clothe my whole family for $35. Listen, my, my wife and daughters went first, they came back, and I, I was just like, I was impressed. I'm just saying, if there was a spiritual gift of shopping, my wife accomplished that gift yesterday. I was just like, okay, you did that with $35, let's go back, let's go back. And so we go back, and now I'm a part of the mission, I, I'm, I'm convinced, I've seen, I've seen the life change, Right? And we get there, and, and, and we're, we're looking around. Everything that's a part of the cell that's got this little stamp, and we're, I'm just scanning. I'm on a mission. I'm scanning every shoe, every shirt, every jacket. I'm, I'm scanning. I'm looking for that sign. I'm like, okay, we're getting it in the bag, right? And I kid you not, there's, there's people there. They're like, oh, everything that fits in the bag, right, $35. I mean, just toss a little something in there, right, just nonchalantly, just, huh. Ah. That ain't how we played. I'm just letting you know. We, we, we got probably 80 items. We went over in a corner and we started military rolling this stuff. 
sticking it in this bag. I thought at one moment, I was like, should I go get a heat gun so we can expand the plastic in this bag? Like, we were, we were rolling, we are shoving, like we put a shoe in there. It's like, you know what? There's space inside that shoe. I wonder where we can fit in there. We literally, we presented like this, this piece of art of a bag to the lady at the checkout. She was amazed. She almost gave her life to Jesus just in that one moment right there, just, just seeing what we had done with this bag, right? She scanned everything, and she ended up, she was like, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to fit this in one bag afterwards. I'm like, I don't care. As long as I'm paying $35 for that bag, you can put it in as many bags as you want. And I think she got it in three afterwards. I tell you that story because we were on a mission. And because we were on a mission, it changed the way we thought. It changed the way we acted. Like, we, we were there to accomplish something. The girls waiting an hour uh, behind us in line while we checked out all this stuff, they were not on a mission. Both of them had half full bags. Half full. Half, I almost was just like, get out. Get out of the store. You don't even belong in the store right now. You're going to walk up here with a half full bag. Erin tried to be, you know, helpful. She looked over and she goes, hey, guys, you know what? Y'all both have half full bags. You could probably put it in one bag and save a lot of money. And they said, they said, oh, yeah, we just we couldn't find enough to fill up, fill up a bag. So I guess we're just going to have half full bags. She turned around and looked at me like, I just can't help these people. <laughs> I, just, I, I tried to. I tried. I tried. I tried to help them, right? But we were, we were on a mission, and we came back. Listen, look, you like my new shirt? Listen, I'm like, I know it's July, and it's long sleeves, but I'm wearing it. You like my new shoes? I'm wearing it. Right? On mission, on mission. Well, the thing is, is that God came with a mission, but then he invited us to share in it. And... He makes it so clear so that it can't be missed. It, it can't be mistaken. That, that even preserved in the words of Scripture, that throughout time, even though we weren't standing in the moment and seeing Jesus, we get to imagine ourselves in that moment because He's speaking to us as well. And this verse is oftentimes referred to as the Great Commission. The great co-mission. Co because we are now joining him in his mission. And this is what it says in Matthew 28 verses 18 through 20. It says, Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely, I am with you always to the very end of the age. This summer, we've been looking at habits of a disciple. Habits of a disciple. Like, what, what happens when we decide we're going to become a disciple of Jesus? There's going to be certain character qualities. There's going to be certain behaviors. There's going to be certain things that over time should be produced in us. That people should be able to look at us and go, well, I see that and that looks like Jesus. You must be a disciple of Jesus. See, I think that these disciples, the first disciples, the twelve, right? They're in this moment, and they signed up to be a disciple of Jesus, and Jesus is letting them know that that also means that they will make disciples of Jesus. Disciples make disciples who make disciples. And all of a sudden, something shifts. It's not just what do I get from this relationship, but what do I share from my relationship with God? And it's not just a side project. I want you to understand this. This is, this is huge. God's plan is your mission. God's plan is your mission. God's plan was for you and me to go into the world, to all nations, to all nation, people groups, to all 
nationalities, to, to go everywhere, right? To go make disciples. That wasn't a, a job that he gave for pastors, preachers. That's what he gave for us as disciples of Jesus Christ. His plan was to do that. And his plan has now become our mission. But I just wonder, I just wonder, do we pursue it with the same level of passion as a $35 bag of resale clothes? Right? Does it really get into our heart? Does it really reshape our lives? I wonder if you were to define the mission of your life, what you're most passionately pursuing. And you were to assess that, how, how have you come up with the mission for your life? The beauty of a relationship with God is, is there's certain things that you don't have to come up with on your own. Because he shared it with you. The creator of the universe has a plan. And the sad thing is, is we, we are usually busy coming up with our own plans. You ever, you ever plug something in on your GPS and your phone, right, in the map, and, and you got there and you realized you plugged it in wrong? I mean, wouldn't, wouldn't it stink to just live your whole life driven on a mission to find out it wasn't even the right path, it wasn't even the right road, you were heading in the wrong direction? I mean, that's wrong on so many levels, right? Because I know that when I plug something into my map and it tells me it's going to take 21 minutes to get there, my goal is to get there in 20, right? Absolutely. See, we got, yeah. Now, I know there's some people that are like, you know, you should probably get there less time, be conservative, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, I've learned this, that the, the traffic laws only apply if you don't have somewhere to be. Right, But if you got somewhere to go, <laughs> I, I got places to go. I don't need to come to a complete stop. I slowed down. I paused. I, I stopped in my heart. You know, <laughs> right? Right. But wouldn't it be a shame? Like, you, you get to the wrong place and you're going, man, I made this my passion. I made this my goal. And I missed the whole time that God was inviting me into something. And you may go, well, I'm not a, I'm not a pastor. I don't. That's, this sounds, it sounds like your, your mission. No, a disciple of Jesus, someone that comes and says, I, I acknowledge who you are, and I'm going to give my life to becoming like you. That kind of person becomes a disciple maker. Now that term may intimidate you. But really that just means that you start caring for the people in your sphere of influence. It means that you start living a life full of compassion to care about those around you. That your faith isn't just something that's hidden within you. It's something that is shared with those around you. And I don't know about you, but I think that if you're a student, Sharing in his mission is one of the greatest things that you can do because how many students need to know the love of Christ? If you're a teacher, if you're an engineer, if you're a mathematician, if you're a doctor, if you're a nurse, if you, whatever world you live in, I can't think of a better thing that as I live in that world, the people around me are impact, impacted by his love. Impacted. By his love. So I want to challenge you. You know I have, I have people sometimes they'll ask me. Oh, Motion Church is such an interesting name. Like why isn't it first non-denominational church of Lexington. Right? All right well, How did we come up with Motion Church? And, and really the, the idea of motion really had to do with our mission statement. That we help people move from where they are to where God wants them to be. That we think that discipleship looks like taking one step at a time. That we are constantly in motion. 
And so my invitation to all of you today is this. Let's get moving. Let's jump on the train. Because here's the thing I've realized. If you think Motion Church is just a place to come on Sundays, over time, you will get discontent, not because Sundays are lacking, but because the rest of us are running. And you're going to go, what? everybody's running after, they're running after the lost in our city. They're, they're running to serve the needy. They're, they're running wherever God says to go. They're, like They're running like, I, I either got to start running with them or I'm going to feel out of place. And this is my invitation. Let's, let's run together. Let's, let's be a people who live on mission.